This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by Grafton Apple Festival, Peaceful Assembly Church. Well, people will say, what about DC versus Heller? I'll tell you what about DC versus Heller. Scalia, who was the majority opinion in there, said something very curious. He used three words, dangerous and unusual. Do you know what dangerous and unusual is? It's a very large legislative locomotive that he or the Congress will employ to ban whatever kind of weapons they don't see us fit to have. And that's morally wrong. But what kind of country, and let's start looking at that, at, at it that way, what kind of country could we create here in New Hampshire? Do you happen to have an international border? Yes, you do. Do you happen to be next to Absurdistan, which is Canada, which is where Stefan Molyneux hails from? Yes, you do. Nonetheless, could you possibly use that as a lever? You certainly could. Do you have resources here that could be used as exports? Has anybody here visualized New Hampshire as a country? You could even keep your name if you wished. Make it a nation. Make it nation state number 197. I am a self-professed anarchist and abolitionist. I don't like the state. But I also realize that it is a pipe dream and a chaotic under undertaking for my own sake to say, well, I'm going to move directly to a stateless society. But I do think that there is a chance here where if New Hampshire, especially the folks that I'm surrounded by here at Porkfest, that if a critical mass of folks like those in front of me around here, those who are sympathetic to the view that government is much too big, you could give it a fighting chance. Because the fighting chance is this. Let's not have 197 nation states on Earth. Let's have 197 hundred. Let's have 19,700. Let's have 197,000 of them. I believe there's a political carrying capacity. I believe that the reason why Greece, to a certain extent, was able to preserve liberty and freedom, to the extent that they could, outside of the institution of slavery that was in both eastern and western parts of the world at the time, the reason they were able to preserve the freedom and liberty they had is because they were so bloody small. The larger something gets, and the moment democracy becomes a part of that calculus over a generation or two or three, that democracy turns into a notion where your neighbor is your property and you are going to use the ballot box to vote their time, resources, and wealth out of their pockets into your own. That's exactly what democracy is about. We can sing its praises. Churchill said, well, it's the worst government in the world, but it's the best one we have, to which I say poppycock. I think there are other ways that we can organize ourselves where we don't consider our neighbors our property. So what makes a country? Well, according to the United Nations, which I don't hold as the authority for freedom and liberty, but they say you have to have things like a space or territory where... Thank you, sir. I don't like the United Nations either. I wish they'd just go away, maybe to Antarctica or Mars. So they, they, ha they have some, some specifics on what makes a country. And some of these things you guys are going to disagree with. Has space or territory which has internationally recognized boundaries? Has people who live there on an ongoing basis? Has economic activity and, or and an organized economy? Now, you know how the United Nations reads that. They don't read it the way Porkfest reads it. Has the power of social engineering such as education? And I shit you not, that's what it read. Has a transportation system for moving goods and people? Has a government which provides public services and police power? God help us. Has sovereignty? No other state should have power over the country's territory. And has earned external recognition, and I will talk about the value of that later on. So I'm talking about secession and it is a four-letter word in America, is secession a strange idea? Here's what I want the amateur or maybe professional historians in the audience to examine. Can you think of a country that has been birthed in anything but secession? And I'll provide you two factors that would mean what the secession is. It's either the divorce of an area of a known nation state 
to assume its own sovereignty and integrity, or in some ways it could be where one takes a government and you have a wholesale revolution or evolution in which that government changes hands in a significant way. For instance, one of the more deleterious circumstances that occurred in is in 1918 with the Soviet Union and the formation of the Soviet Union. In better circumstances, we had our initial divorce in 1783 from the United Kingdom, which for a mere eight years was a free nation. Then the Constitution came on board, and everything's been downwind since. Don't miss this year's Grafton Apple Festival, Sunday, September 30th. Bring a few apples, hang with New Hampshire Freedom Folk, and crank a vintage cider press. Details are at peacefulassemblychurch.com.